one's, this one's tricky. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Wingate Solutions. I hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be sort of an off-the-cuff training video. Just some tips and tricks on uh, barricades specifically. Now, if you enjoy this content and you like more of this informational type content rather than like reviews or rifle setups, let me know. Um, I'm kind of thinking about starting to move that direction to a little more informal training type videos. Now, don't take this the wrong way, but disclaimer, don't take anything I teach you here as gospel. And also don't take this and then use this as your only form of training. Make sure you're going out and vetting all the information you get. Go to professional instructors, guys that are squared away in their craft and seek actual one-on-one -on -one instruction. Uh, if this is something you guys like, let me know. I'm uh, probably going to start putting out some more informational content like this. So we'll see how it does. Um, I'm just out getting a little reps in. I've been real busy lately. I'm uh, training at the academy right now, so my time's a little valued when I do have some free time. So I'm trying to get out here to get some content for you guys, but I apologize for being a little bit uh, laxed at getting some content out to you the last couple of weeks. So i got a little bit more time of being busy, then I'm going to have a lot of free time ahead of me. So I hope to get a lot more of this done. <sighs> anyway, today's video is going to be about barricades. Now, I'm going to start by prefacing barricades or cover concealment. We can get lost in the weeds when it comes to talking about cover, use of cover, how to appropriately manage cover, things like that. This isn't going to be that video, but I'm going to dabble a little bit here and there with some of that stuff. So, in general, it's kind of widely accepted that cover stops bullets, concealment just hides you, right? So, that's kind of a general philosophy on this stuff. Um, barricade shooting positions can be incorporated with use of cover or concealment or just creating a more stable platform. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So contextually, however you want to deep dive into that, that's up to you. I might dabble in it a little bit, but I'm going to try to stay in the lane of target shooting. And if you take it for other context, uh, that's kind of on you, if that makes sense. <laughs> so barricades. First thing I'm going to hear from a lot of people is the use of extending past cover, right? Or concealment. Again, this is all situational context driven. There's a time and a place to not want to expose yourself past cover. And there's a time and a place to want to build a solid shooting position, right? Now, the uh, typical thing you think of when people say that not going beyond cover is like snipers, right? Whether it's law enforcement, military, or what have you, is they don't want to stick their barrel out a window, right? For obvious reasons of the enemy being able to see them and them showing exactly where they are. So they're going to be deep into a room, right? Or through some kind of hole, but they're still going to create stability. So that's where this comes into play. And not just from that sniper mindset, but just me bringing it up. Don't get lost in the fact that I'm behind a piece of plywood and I'm sticking my muzzle beyond it. Like, no crap. I'm practicing a skill, right? And working these different shooting positions, working barricades are a very effective tool and it's a skill set, right? It's not a tactic per se, if that makes sense. So again, try not to deep dive, but I kind of do that sometimes. VTAC style barricade. A lot of you have trained with them, seen them, used them probably for the greater part of a decade or more, right? This is kind of a modified one, so it's not exactly the VTAC standards. It gets the job done. A lot of the holes and angles and heights are exactly the same, but it was just a spare piece of plywood I had laying around that was this size already. So I cut it to form a nice VTAC type barricade to throw up in my woods for my range. So you'll see it has a lot of different heights, positions, also different slots at different angles, right? And even some down all the way in the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see those right now. What it does is it forces you to train weird positions and or learn to use something pretty solid to allow you to either get faster shots on target or faster follow-up shots or to be able to just steady your reticle in general. Now, this is going to be all target distance and size specific. 
okay? In real world or even not just shooting targets, I'm probably not going to spend extra time, uh, two or three seconds to build a solid shooting position for a 15 yard shot, right? So it's all relative to that distance and then also that target size. So like right now I'm just working a uh, C zone or reduced C zone uh, steel silhouette and I'm only at about 50 yards. So I'm just working on the skill set, real easy shots, but it allows me to really get after it as far as my trigger press goes. Um, when you're working this, it's all going to be based on your recoil management, your actual rifle's recoil impulse to begin with, right? Like if you have a real smooth rifle, that's going to be a lot easier than if you have one that's a little overgassed and kind of tends to recoil and jump around on you a little more than others. But getting into the idea of building that quick or hasty firing position. If I'm at a distance that I can just shoot offhand, standing or kneeling, whatever, unsupported, and I can shoot that target at a pace that my reticle doesn't leave the target under recoil, well, in theory, I can just keep sending rounds as fast as I can manage that recoil, right? Where something like this comes into play, and that's any structure, this is just a barricade position, right? Is, uh, it could be simulating a vehicle, it could be simulating a fence post, it could be simulating actual like stone wall cover, anything like that. But the point is, if I need to stabilize to either make a further shot or a tighter um, target size, or if I want to be able to get on it and be able to send faster follow-up shots without my reticle recoiling off target and having to resettle. So that's where this sort of thing really comes in uh, into play. And I'll get shooting in a minute. I'll stop talking. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I'm just kind of off the cuff. If you guys like this sort of content, let me know. All right, I'm going to move a little bit into how to actually mount, dismount, work a rifle around barricades um, a little bit. So one of the big things is having the ability to actually break a rifle off of your shoulder. Too many guys are only used to being on a line and they are ready and sucked into that rifle stock and they don't understand actually manipulating the rifle in confined spaces. You absolutely can manipulate a longer rifle in those type of confined areas. But the point is being able to actually break a rifle over your shoulder and then re-punch out um, around cover. And that's if you don't have the ability to be away from cover right like the idea would be uh being an arm's reach or a rifle length behind cover actually being able to extend pie out make shots that sort of thing and that's great in theory when you're at distances where you don't want that extra support position such as a barricade but there's also times where you can't be that far from cover depending on other obstacles in your life right or in, in or around your space so being able to break that rifle down over the shoulder or you know straight up and down like this there's a time and a place for up high uh that sort of thing is important so that's the important thing especially when you're working this type of VTAC style barricade of moving from position to position you have to be able to break that rifle over the shoulder and then re-punch out and get your sight picture that way so a little bit on these right so again this is a modified kind of VTAC barricade if you heard that uh name before Kyle Lamb Viking Tactics he's kind of like the grandfather of this style of training and using these, as far as I know, um, Viking Tactics VTAC Barricade, he's the one that's always pushed these. Um, whether he got them from someone else, I don't know, but I've always known it to be Kyle Lamb's kind of training style. And I've used them for a long time and it's great. Um, again, training material, right? Doesn't actually create a realistic, you know, cover position. The guys that are so fixated on training having to mirror 100% real life at all times kind of get beyond that way of thinking breaking down the isolated skill sets something like this that's measurable you can understand your baseline and figure out kind of real world style of shooting that this is where you do it um i get it it's plywood if again get past that <laughs> guys get nutty i get it my barrel is going to come forward to this again it's not part of the uh thinking here there's a time and a place to make sure you're back behind cover and there's a time and a place to build a solid shooting position and that's what this is about so if i was going to be picking a shooting position from here one of the things i like to do is use my hand to actually interface with the barricade lock in my rifle and also into whatever the structure is there's gonna be a little wobble to this so the more i can increase stability in that uh, item the better the more i can keep my sight's stable and get them stable faster, the better, right? So faster first round hit, and then also 
locking in and creating faster follow-up shots. And I'll demo a little bit of that in a second. Um, but the important thing here is to lock yourself down. Now, how high your barricade position is, is going to allow you maybe to get a knee in there. You know, wrist, uh, maybe raise your dominant side knee to create some elbow support. I'm not going to get into a lot of that today. That's going to be future videos of really creating stability and uh, working different cover and things like that. Today's going to be more of like an intro to this sort of thing. But the important thing is being able to create that position with your hand and lock in. And it doesn't have to look one particular way. There's a million ways to do it. Every piece of barricade, every barricade position might actually be a little different. So like this one, I can actually sh slam my hand stop right up against this barricade and let the rifle do most of the work and then just press into that hand stop with a thumb and then wrap around that barricade. And it allows me to get pretty locked in. Now again, I'm only at 50 yards, but I could be doing this at further distances as well. And depending on target size, that sort of thing, this is a pretty easy shot to be making today. So it's just for example. Um, depending on what you have as available training space, this might be something you work on. You just might want to change the target sizes to be even smaller and smaller and smaller um, to push you under speed or for your accuracy purposes. I'm being able to lock in. Then again, depending on the height I was at, if I could actually create stability with a knee, I would do that as well. This is like almost a little bit too high for me to get a knee. If I were to drop in to this one here, I'd be able to. Um, and real quick to uh, reference that, breaking the rifle down again. Being able to come out of a position, into a position, and I'm no expert at it, but being smooth and actually being able to work that rep is going to make you a lot better in real life doing that sort of thing. And that's where these VTAC barricades are awesome. You can work a lot of really weird positions, work your way down through the holes, whether it's one shot each or two shots each. Uh, kind of training, is, training value is endless on this sort of thing. So it's pretty cool. And it allows you to work pretty much everything from standing down to different kneeling positions, all the way down to prone, rollover prone, that sort of thing. Um, now, working different positions, I'm a fan. Most professional instructors today are a fan of running the safety, right? If I am off site and I am breaking my rifle off this barricade to pick a new shooting position, weapons back on safe, okay? Um, and that's industry standard. So I know a lot of guys kind of get weird about that, and they think if you, don't, they think if you run the safety, you're going to die automatically. Uh, I call bullshit. No, you're not going to run the safety with purpose, build it into your subconscious and burn it in that when you are off sites, you're back on safe. You don't even think about it. If you're at the point where you still have to think about manipulating your safety, you need more training. And that's, I don't, if that might be shots fired for some of you guys, get training, especially if you're the guy that actually calls other dudes out for running the safety. Okay. Cause if you just don't know, and you're getting into ARs, you might not quite understand what I'm talking about. And that's perfectly fine. Um, get some training, kind of understand, build the mindset, kind of learn to manipulate one of these guys. Running the safety does not take extra time. And if it does, it is negligible. But it is that extra benefit of running this rifle the way it was intended. These things have the best ergonomic safety design of any rifle out there. Run it. It's supposed to be run. Okay. All right. There's a little rant on safeties. All right, guys, I'm going to do a little bit of live training demo. This is really for my baseline, but you might get something out of it. So again, I'm only at 50 yards, C-zone steel, pretty easy shots. Pretty smooth, easy to shoot rifle. It's kind of a chunky guy. So uh, not a lot of recoil off target, but I'll give you a little feedback on how I felt doing this in a second. And I may or may not use one of my other rifles during this to kind of get a little feedback on that as well. But I'm going to shoot five rounds standing at a speed that I'm confident in my hits, okay? So I'm gonna try to get on it, but I'm not just send around. So hopefully you'll be able to hear all the audible uh, dings from the steel. Five rounds standing, no, su no support at all. Let's see what my time is. Then I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but I'm gonna use a barricade position. I'm still gonna start standing. So the idea will be how much more off is that first round hit? And then also how fast is it all together, right? That's what it's all going to come down to. All right, let's try it. So five rounds standing, no support. All right, not too bad. Uh, 
first shot was a little slow. It was a 1.15. And then all together was a 3.46. So pretty laid back. I probably could have gotten on it a little faster. I'm going to do the exact same thing now, except it's going to be go to a kneeling position of my choice, pick one of these holds. I'm going to send those same five rounds. I don't think I'm going to get that first shot in that 115, though. So that'll kind of be my point in this at the end. So we'll hold on to that. <laughs> so, all right, let's try it again. Same thing. <laughs> All right. If I was paying attention, I would have known I was out. I'm not in love with that one, but 244 four, and then a total of a 344. Four. So I'm going to do this a couple times probably. And the idea here is again, it's all distance, size of target dependent. So 50 yards, I'm confident in my skills standing or from whatever position that I can get on my reticle quick, right? So that's going to be different for each of you. This is, so it's a pretty close distance for me to be shooting a rifle. So there's no way that I'm going to be able to build a solid foundation faster from a barricade. Now, real life, it might offer me cover. So that is a big deal. But either way, at this distance, standing, just getting after it, going to be faster for at least first round or two hits on target does that make sense choosing to build a, a foundation is going to allow me to get on the rifle faster have way faster split times so my split times were 0.17 there compared to what, wherever they were before 4.4 or something like that i think is what it was so i was a lot slower standing to get follow-up hits again i wasn't just running and gunning i wasn't blasting but when i built that solid foundation I was able to just send those rounds as fast as I can get splits. And I'm just going to assume I made all the hits. I may, may not have. Maybe, maybe you could tell me otherwise. I was sending them pretty quick, but my reticle was hovering right there in the center. Really allows you to just stack rounds at that point, which is cool, right? So context is going to drive your decision-making on this sort of thing. If you guys want to stay with me for a few more minutes, I'll do a few more reps of it. Cool? All right. Thanks. All right. All right, I'm going to do the exact same thing. This time, my little 14.5. Um, this gun's got, even though it's a mid-length 14.5, it's got a little more recoil impulse than the other one. A lighter build, doesn't have a big chunky optic or a can on it. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this one does. Honestly, I don't think it's going to be much of a difference. Um, just being that I was shooting at a conservative speed standing anyway. We'll find out. Five rounds standing. See how it does at 50. And cool. Ready? I don't know if that last one was a hit. That might have been a miss. All right. A little faster first round shot, 1.04. So right in that same range. 0.64 splits, so way slower split times, and then a 3.62 total. And I don't know if that last one was off the right shoulder or not. I kind of felt like I didn't let it settle back under recoil. But I definitely, under those shots, now again, I wasn't throwing a ton of muscle into it, a ton of body into it, but this gun had a lot more recoil impulse up into the right in this exact setup with this 5.56 ammo. Um, no big deal. But you can see here is where context, whether it's target shooting or realistic shooting, first round hit, I still am going to say, is going to be way faster just getting after it at this distance. And you training and understanding what distances you can get away with that sort of thing is key, right? There's a lot of distances where if time allows or if the terrain allows, I'm going to take the time to drop to prone and settle for that first shot because it's going to prepare me to get an, an actual first round impact faster than just hoping for it standing. Okay. And that's going to be, everybody's a little different. Everybody's got different skill levels. Finding out that out for yourself is important. So that's what we're kind of working at today. So same thing. 
uh, as I did last uh, with the other gun, five rounds. I'm going to take that barricade position and send five rounds, see where I'm at now. With a little bit jumpier gun, if I can lock it down and get that recoil impulse straight back and not really jumping off target, see how fast I can be. All right, let's get after it. Uh, enough jibber jabbering. Okay, so a little talking on that one quick. I'll say my times first. 228 first shot. So that's actually not that bad, but it's still a full second slower, right? And if we're talking two way range, that's a full extra second I'm giving someone else to get that first impact on me, right? So that really sends it home of how important it might be to get around at that distance, again, target size dependent uh, from that initial position. But that's a 228, uh, two four splits, so a little faster that time, and a 384 total. Now I can say, I shoot a lot more magnified optics uh, as of now. I spent most of my career on red dots, but I've been shooting a lot more magnified lately. So when I get behind that two and a half to 10, at two and, a, uh, two and a half power, it's like I'm home. I sink into that and I just, I know that optic and I just get behind it and I can go. Where this guy, even though it's one of my main squeezes, I don't shoot it as often right now. Um, so I wasn't as trusting of my sight picture. So I really slowed down a little bit. Um, so if I would have really got after a little faster, my splits would have been faster, but that's not an excuse, just reality. Um, it is what it is. Let's do the exact same thing. Same gun. I'm using my jumpy gun, right? The one that I don't trust as much for getting after. And I'm going to do one round standing, four rounds from a position of my choice. We'll see how that changes things. <laughs> So again, that last one was a, this one that I just did was a 228 first shot, 384 total, 24 splits. Before that, I think I was at a one, was I 1.04? I was right around that, just over a second mark. And my splits were pretty slow. They're like six something. Um, and I wasn't confident in that radical bounce. Let's see how I want to do something right in the middle, how it works, how it changes things. All right, let's get after it. All right, 1.09 with three, four splits, but my time went up a lot, four, six, eight. So, and that's just something I probably, if I did these same drills three, four, five times each, I'm going to see some fluctuation there. So take this for what it is. It's kind of a one-off, one rep drill of each of these. Um, so I can't like base everything on these. There's obviously shooter error involved too. So this is just training some food for thought for you guys. Kind of get something out of it. So, and again, some of you probably recognize that I rocked that safety from going from the standing to the kneeling. Now that's something too. Let's see what I got here. All right, I got enough. I'm going to do that quick. Quick experiment for you guys. I'm going to do a standing shot. And again, this is only going to be one rep of each. So take it for what it is. But we'll see if I'm pretty close. One shot standing, one shot kneeling, barricaded. No use to the safety. I'm going to consciously not use the safety between the positions, right? Next rep, I'm going to do the exact same thing. One round, standing, safety back on as I transition down to the barricade. Safety off, one more shot. Let's see how much different they are. All right, timer would be good. <sighs> All right, stand by. No safety, one round standing, one round kneeling. <whistles> oh. <laughs> so it actually got to me that time. I went to put it back on safe just from, again, subconscious habit. Kind of shows you. You know, it is what it is. Um, I'm going to do that again just to kind of clean it up because I don't want to give you guys a biased opinion on that. But it was a 103 first shot. Uh, total was a 327. So let's see if I have enough. I'm going to get some more 
rounds. We'll do that again. All right, cool. All right, same exact thing. One round standing, one round kneeling. I'm going to try not to get hiccup there with the safety again. All right, 1.06, so pretty consistent with that first shot, and a 3.26, so not too much different there. Now I'm going to do it running the safety, okay? Safety down uh, from the standing to the kneeling. See what happens. And that was a pretty conservative speed. 1.12. So I was a little for, uh, slower on that first shot. That was just shooter inconsistency because I ran the safety on first shot every time regardless. So 1.12, but a faster time, 3.16. So it was actually faster at the time. So that kind of shows, and I could keep doing this over and over and over, how negligible the time is running the safety when you're properly trained and build it into your subconscious, okay? Um, plus... Guys that get on it about real world, you're going to die in the streets for if you run your safety. There's a million other variables. Like, let's be honest, like me actually making hits with this, me being confident with this rifle and being able to effectively use it. Um, how about moving? How about communicating? How about use of cover and concealment? How about not being somewhere I shouldn't be in the first place? Right? Um, there's a million other variables to running a rifle real life context me rocking a safety that I've burned into my brain subconsciously isn't going to be a thing that puts me in the ground. So that's my opinion. Anyway, let's get back to it. All right, guys, shameless uh, plug real quick. <laughs> um, just because this is how I make a living nowadays. So I figured I'll throw some of that in here as we go. For you guys that haven't been following the content long, you may uh, not know my wife and I make handmade rifle slings sling retention straps a bunch of other things we're going to be coming out with shortly uh, leg straps for holsters i don't have them out yet but that'll be coming out soon tourniquet holders a bunch of other cool things so if you want to check it, any of that out and want to support the channel head over to the website link down in the description i really appreciate you guys everything's handmade by us um very small business it's kind of allows us to do what we do and uh you know that's about it for that but uh one of my rifle slings, sling retention strap, still in a rifle sling is pretty cool depending on what you do for a living or depending on how you like to run a rifle um, or store it. But you make these, make these quick adjust rifle slings and uh, I like them. That's why I run them. That's why we started making them. And uh, maybe you will too. So check them out. All right. We're getting into this a little bit more. I'm going to do a couple more reps just for myself. Kind of bring you guys along today, talking about barricades, seeing if you guys like it. Also, I'm getting my own training reps out of it. So let me know if this is the kind of content you're digging and you want to keep seeing from me. I'll get into a million other concepts. Um, some of you guys know I teach this stuff for a living. I've run a gun for a living for a while. Um, I was a law enforcement SWAT guy, right? So I have a decent amount of knowledge on things to teach people. So if I can throw a little bit of information your way, I'm happy to do so. Um, if you guys are in Pennsylvania or anywhere around Pennsylvania, I'm hoping to start a training group shortly and also start offering classes privately, both uh, uh, to Leo and also civilians. So I'd like to uh, have mostly open enrollment type courses unless somewhere is asking for specific um, closed enrollment type course. So look forward to that. I'm not a big gatekeeper, so I prefer to have information be able to be given freely to anybody that wants to learn to run one of these and be a professional, uh, whether that be civilian or paid uh, gun carrier. So cool. All right, let's get after it. Enough jabbering. So I'm going to work a little bit this barricade. So we've already talked about how important it is to be able to work a piece of cover or concealment or just a structured piece in your environment to be able to build stability. Now I'm going to show here real quick. We already talked about how um, doing the five round standing or five rounds getting into this position and making it work. There's definitely going to be time between first round and building the position. 
Now I'm going to talk about kind of already being in that position uh, for again, a million reasons you might be just how much it keeps the gun settled down on target. So I'm going to shoot a few rounds, just kneeling just at the target. I'm not going to use a timer, right? So we're just going to just so you can kind of feel the cadence difference. Um, this gun doesn't like to be used. Uh, the timer doesn't pick this rifle up anyway, so it doesn't really matter besides giving me that audible cue to start. That's something for another day as well. I'm going to shoot five rounds into steel 50 yard C-Zone. And I'm going to build a position and kind of show you guys the exact same thing and just kind of talk you through what my reticle's doing. Cool. All right. Let's do it. So unsupported, unbraced, kneeling position, using my optic. I'm going to put this guy up at like three power. Yeah. We'll stay out at one power. That works. I forgot I adjust my eyepiece earlier for... Shooting at distance. All right, five rounds unsupported. Kind of just see the cadence. Again, I'm gonna shoot when I'm confident my reticle comes back on target. Now, if I miss, because I'm human, that might happen, but I'm trying not to just send rounds for you guys to make it look cool. I'm actually trying to get training value out of it. When my rifle settles back on the, on the target, and the key is, as soon as it settles down on the target, I'm not trying to over aim. I have a huge target, so I should be pretty confident in my skills be able to get on the trigger as soon as that sight is anywhere within that steel. Does that make sense? So it's a little bit of mindset on this. All right, let's get after it. Do a little press check. Nope. All right, cool. And I'm just gonna start with the muzzle here, just, just because, again, it doesn't matter. All right, this is a real smooth gun, but it still jumps at least to the edges of the target. Again, that's where I was talking about how I don't want to over aim. I don't want to bring that reticle back to the center and spend unneeded time fine tuning it directly in the center. But I also don't want to be sending rounds when it's hovering around the edges. So when it recoils, it is jumping just enough to go to the far edge around that target. And then I settle it back down and press the round. Uh, so it's still a pretty decent cadence, I would think. 50 yards, just unsupported kneeling. I'm okay with that. But where it, using a barricade shines, is that reticle not even moving off the center of the target? So that's what I'm going to kind of demonstrate now. So I'm going to take a second. I'm going to lock in, right? That's all going to be context-driven, how much time you would have to do this. And I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm not using any elbow support, anything like that. I'm just using that handguard. I'm just kind of locked into the rifle against this barricade, which is pretty sturdy. All right, let's get after it. I would safely say cadence was vastly improved. My, my reticle never even came close to coming off the steel. So that's kind of where, oh, stupid me, I'm talking to you guys and I have an unloaded gun. So that's just me not paying attention. <laughs> So, you guys have instructors that are afraid to mess up in front of the students or afraid to demo in front of their students, I'd recommend finding other instructors. <laughs> Shameless plug for when I start teaching you guys. <laughs> Another cool thing about running these type of barricades in training is you can train a lot of isolated skill sets, right? Manipulating the gun in general, right? In and out of different ports. Um, building positions, not spending crazy amount of time settling down sight picture just enough that you're confident in your shot, again, depending on the size of the target, distance, that sort of thing. Running the safety, we already talked about that, working that safety in between each hole, and it's building that subconscious. Every time you do it in this isolated environment, it's going to be that much more important when you're like running a gun and doing actual like scenario type drills. It's just going to all come together, right? So this is practice, isolated different skills, different positions, right? So whether it's just different kneeling from a different standing or kneeling positions, supported, unsupported, different heights, that sort of thing. Um, you can also work cover, uh, simulated cover using these sort of things. If you are actually trying to keep yourself behind this cover and not be exp overexposing that sort of thing. That's not really the way I'm using it today. Uh, it's more so for the different positions, right? But you could hold yourself to the standard, especially if you have buddies watching, yelling at you whenever you're exposing like legs or 
you know, your back's exposed, things like that. You can get into that too, which is really cool for this sort of thing. Um, the different positions, positions and angles really force you to experiment. A lot of these are going to be based on you, um, what works for you. People have different injuries, different body types, different flexibility uh, abilities. Um, so being able to find the positions that work for you, again, are going to correlate to real world potential usage of different positions um, or for competition stuff like guys that run a lot of uh, PRS or precision like gas gun matches. They're going to have stuff like this and whether it's this exact thing or it's a, like a tank trap or something else and you being able to build a position off of it and get well aimed fire and settle that reticle down is important. So it's something cool to work on. A lot of guys just do just flat range line drills that don't really involve positional shooting. Um, I think we need to add more of this into our repertoire of training. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Off the cuff again, as usual, I'm just going to do one hit from the from each of these three steps on the outside. And then I'm going to do, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight. I'm going to do the prone as well. I'm going to see if I can actually get down there. I haven't even looked from down there. I just threw this thing in the woods today. I want to see if I can actually even see the prone. So you'll find out real time if I can. Um, if you're doing this training, one nice thing you can do is do it dry. Um, experiment, learn the different positions see what feels comfortable to you. And then after a while, you kind of just get a flow with it and you can kind of eyeball up the height of something and just get into it with a little bit of uh, speed. But it's important to train it dry. Um, and it also saves you money not having to blast through a lot of these rounds. And doing this with just one round each, it gets you a good training rep. Um, but if you wanted to add two rounds, that would get you that recoil management um, piece of it. Three, whatever you want to do. If you have a decent amount of ammo budget, just send it, do a bunch of rounds per hole. Another cool thing that I like to add into this is incapacitation shooting, right? I know I'm kind of getting a little deep diver, deeper dive into this. I was planning on this being a nice quick video, <laughs> but using a barricade for incapacitation training. So that's one arm is down, right? So only manipulating the rifle with one arm using barricade helps a lot because it gives me something to uh, actually mount the rifle to in position in a, in place of my support hand, whether that's, shooting from my support side and not having my dominant hand or vice versa. It allows me to work the gun, uh, clear mouth functions, do a lot of the cool training that I can do incapacitation wise. This is great. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. I'm just going to do one round per level, one round per hole. Just kind of see where I'm at. All right. We're on the, my uh, general purpose carbine, my go-to rifle. Love this thing. This one's this one's tricky. Oh yeah, nice and muddy. <laughs> you guys can see that my my mag is tracking gimbal thing. I need to like move my head to have it track me. I don't have a cameraman. <laughs> my mag is sticking out of the the mud. That's fun. So cool. Anyway, hope you guys got something out of that. If you like this style of content, if you like a little more of my range session content or a little bit of instructional, right? Like I kind of say in other videos, disclaimer, don't take anything I'm saying as gospel. Make sure you actually go out there and vet training. Go to some qualified guys. Get training on this sort of thing. Don't take what I tell you on the internet and then use it for any unlawful purposes. I'm not advising that at all. Make sure you get good training and uh, all that good stuff. It's important, right? It's good to have a baseline. Learning from YouTube and seeing other guys do things is not inherently wrong at all. That's kind of why I want to put this content out there. Um, 
I was self-taught for a long time before I started doing this stuff professionally. And a lot of that stuff I learned was from watching other guys do stuff. And it gives you a baseline, right? Some of it might be right. Some of it might be wrong, but it's okay to learn on here, but then go and vet that training from somebody that's going to tell you whether you're doing stuff right or wrong. That makes sense. And if you guys are interested in taking training with me, it's something I'm kind of dabbling in. Um, I train professionally, but I'm looking into getting into the civilian space as far as training dudes that are out there just want to learn to run these things better, especially guys that are in the PA area. I don't really have any plans on traveling outside of Pennsylvania at this point in time, but if you guys are interested in that sort of thing or if you're interested in getting a training group going in the greater PA area, let me know. It's kind of on my list of things to do. Anyway, if you want to support this channel, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Hit that like button, that subscribe button. Give me a comment down below. I really enjoy reading them. And if you want to check us out or uh, support us in another way, you can check out our Instagram at Wingate Solutions. That's where I give a lot of my updates, things like that as far as what's new with my content and with the business. And if you want to support us any further, head over to the website, link in the description. And it is uh, Wingate Solutions LLC.com. Handmade rifle slings, sling retention straps. I'll have my holster leg straps up there shortly and a few other good things uh, that I think you guys will like. So anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. If you like this content, let me know down below so I know what to put out next. Until next time, guys, get out and train.